With eight days of early skiing under our belt, we left off from Colorado with a killer opening day at Loveland Ski Area. After a few days in Utah, we took time to build a ski rack in Luna in the garage and a few other things before heading back east to Colorado. What's going on, Squad? Welcome to another episode of Season 3. Today is a different day. We are um, doing some renovations on Luna. I say renovations very lightly, but I have some work to do on the van um, before we go back out skiing. And I want to show you guys kind of what I'm going to be doing, or at least trying to do. The main objective today is to build a three ski, three piece ski rack underneath the bed because right now the way my skis work, it just it's just kind of a, a cluster. So we have some challenges that I think we discovered last night trying to plan this out. So I'm not making any promises, but I think we have figured something out that will probably work for this year. And the second biggest objective is building a mount for Starlink up on the roof so I can continue to live stream and upload videos a little bit easier. Um, there's some, some minor things we'd like to get done, but really the, the primary stuff is a ski rack underneath the garage and a mount for Starlink. Papa Joe back here in the vlogs. For those of you guys who have been around for a little bit, you guys know Papa Joe. Um, about two years ago, we built out this whole van. So the first thing we are doing is the ski rack, which the biggest challenge that we found was how wide this a ski is when you uh, have the brakes and the bindings on it. So we were originally gonna put a big piping and kind of slide the ski in, but I kind of didn't realize how big a 10 inch pipe really is and how intrusive it is in the ground. So or the garage, I'm sorry. So what we did instead, we bought a sewer pipe that we're gonna rip down the middle. And we did it with our trusty chalk line. And then we bent our own brackets that we're gonna mount from the, from the, the upper portion of the garage. And we're gonna still try to put the sewer pipe, the half of it in there. So it's gonna be something like this. Only once we gotta rip this pipe first with our that we cut measure with a chalk line. So we're trying to make a little drainage gutter for the water to run as it melts on the skis and control where it, it drips to. So hopefully the, 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 our sewer pipe will create the drainage gutter and then it'll drip down into something that we're gonna put toward the back of the, the garage and control the water. Can't look this up of like how to build a ski rack and like this is all just custom and we're trying to make it work to what we've already built. So um, I think you know, I think this will do the trick. The plan is to try to build three of them so I can carry a few different skis with me. But uh, yeah, first thing we gotta do is take the circular saw and rip this PVC pipe in half. and we wanted it over about as far as we could go. I want to make sure I don't go through. You, no, you won't go through. No, the screw's not long enough. Good, don't let it over tighten. Well, Scott, we have finished the hanging ski rack underneath the garage. A few things worked and a few things did not work. And I'm gonna kind of walk you through how we built this and the limitations, the struggles, and sort of what worked out pretty well. The first thing is that we can only fit two ski racks here. There just is not enough room. Um, we're essentially spanning the entire width of the garage. So I will most likely only be carrying two pairs of skis with me. We just totally miss underestimated how big, um, you know, one pipe would be to, to carry one set of skis, much less four. So we kind of had to settle on uh, two only, but I think that is, uh, that's still a pretty solid number to be able to, to have skis up underneath the garage. We took these metal brackets here um, that we bent into a shape to fit the skis. 
um, and hoisted them or secured them up to where the bed is. And if you guys are familiar with how the bed works, it's on a slat design. So all these kind of pull out to form the bed, but there's also a set of fixed furring strips. So the rack is actually, you know, screwed up through the bed to these one by two pine furring strips. So in terms of what it's connected to, it's, it's very solid. We secured it a few times. Um, and then these furring strips are secured down through the studs and everything else that we built for the bed. So not really worried about the racks coming out of the ceiling by any means because it kind of really is all supporting each other. The construction of these PVC pipes themselves um, are a bit interesting. If you can see, there's quite a few, uh, let's see if I can get this to focus in here for you guys. You know, there's a quite a few spots where um, the PVC is actually cut and that is just to help guide the ski and the bindings and everything else through the PVC pipe. We found that, um, you know, without these sort of angled um, areas, the ski would get caught um, at a hard edge. So we just kind of filed those down and cut them out to make it so the ski slide in easier. And then really the PVC pipe is connected through the bracket right into the, the pipe itself. And then we created this um, almost like this little gutter tailpiece to help with water um, as it drains off. And then the front of the gutter is actually about an inch higher than the rear. So they're, they're raked down about an inch to help kind of pull the water back as it melts off the ski and essentially all kind of just funnel and you know, I'll put a boot tray or something down here to help catch some of the water. So then when you wanna put the ski in, you just have to kind of got it up here at the top. The tips are a little bit of an issue, like it wants to kind of splice out once the tips go in there, but um, once you kind of get it in there and the tips are in, we made a catch so the toe piece actually stops, so the ski really won't go up anymore once the, once the toe piece catches, and then it actually sits um, just behind the rear brake right there. So it really kind of goes in and there's a, a definitive sort of stop. And to get them out, it's actually a bit easier as it all kind of just pulls down off the PVC pipe. So as you guys know, Joe built mostly everything. I basically just give him the idea and he brings it to life. But um, you know, he was really the one who's cut everything and, and done it all. So how do you think it kind of came out? I can tell you this much. We had our challenges with it. And it will not fall down. That's for sure. I mean, I'm very confident in the build. Uh, I think I think we I think we met the needs with what you really need. Is a it's off the ground. B I think it's pitched, and I think we made a little rain gutter. And I think the one variable is going to be where is the water going to drip, and we're going to put a little catch base in there. So I'm very optimistic about the design and the build, and I think it'll uh, prove to be uh, just what we intended it to be in the next the next few days when we actually try it out. The other major upgrade we were able to get done um, is a solid Starlink mount. This is um, what mounts my satellite dish for Starlink, which essentially gives me satellite internet. So before this was just freestanding and I was a bit concerned with um, it blowing over in the wind and stuff like that. So we, uh, we went through a few different options, but we ultimately thought that the base that Starlink came with was pretty damn good. So we figured out a way to mount just the base itself to the roof so I don't have to worry about winds coming through or anything like that leaving it up overnight. It is totally solid. We have a 320 watt solar panel, we have our fan up here and then we have our cell booster. But in order to mount the solar panel, something that we built um, was, was a rack that goes into the side of um, the actual rails of the van. And these are basically two angle brackets on either side and you can see we, we drilled into, into it to mount the Weeboo. So we essentially did the same thing for the Starlink here. The Starlink came with these holes on the end and all we, all we literally did was just drill right through the, the angle iron here and there. Um, and then we built a very interesting sort of support piece to mount onto where the ladder is. This is very hard to do one handed while hanging on, but we bent the same piece of metal that we use for the ski rack hooked it into the screw 
um, that secures the ladder and you can see it actually doesn't even really hit the ladder so this is merely just kind of like a support piece um, and then this third leg is actually not even secured but um, with those three points I mean this thing is totally totally solid um, and will be will be plenty just to leave the dish up here so now I don't have to bring the base out every time like this whole thing will just simplify the process of getting Starlink set up which was kind of the goal I can just come out with the dish put it up here set the router up and be ready to go and I don't have to worry about it so and this was a huge upgrade for me that I didn't really expect because Starlink is still very new to me but this past week it's proven to be invaluable um, to the channel to the videos everything like that so super stoked on this Joe is actually ripping to Colorado with me tomorrow morning and skiing for a day and then flying out of out of Vail. So me and him are gonna be leaving at three in the morning. So by the time you guys are watching this, we should almost already be at Colorado, but super stoked to ski with Joe. It's gonna be his first day on the hill uh, for, uh, for the year. So uh, we are back to Colorado, back, you know, full gas with the daily ski videos again. So super stoked. I appreciate your guys' patience, but uh, just had to take care of this before the, the season really gets underway. So appreciate all the support and I'll see all of you guys uh, tomorrow in the next episode. Take it easy, fam. Peace out.